faces. Look at this. Hey, I took that one. You've already heard this story. Let's read it. Yeah. It's a great story called Pumpkin Jack. Um, and it's written by Will Hubble. I don't think I took that out, I think. You don't think so? Yeah. yeah. Let's Did see. Did I get my name for a man? Are we ready for the story? A cat cat. When Tim carved his first pumpkin, it was fierce and funny and just perfect. A jack-o'-lantern this good deserved a name. So Tim gave it a name. He called it Jack. Long after the best trick-or-treat candy was eaten, Tim still kept Jack. At night, when a candle made Jack's face dance on the wall and filled the dark with warm pumpkin smells, Tim felt Jack was almost magic. Yet, too soon, the spell was broken. This pumpkin is beginning to rot, announced Mum. It's time to throw it out. Tim knew that it was useless to argue, so he carried Jack out to the garden, which was filled with the brown ghosts of last summer's plants. A dead garden is better than a trash can, thought Tim. Still, it made him sad to leave Jack outside and alone. Whenever chores or playtime brought Tim out to the garden, he looked at Jack. But every time, Jack looked different. He became wrinkled, and his fierce smile began to look silly. Mold started spreading over Jack's bright orange skin, and as the days grew colder, Jack became flatter and flatter. See how he's just squishing down? Yeah, he's an old pumpkin now. Winter began. Soon Jack was hidden beneath the snow and Tim forgot all about him. The cold, heavy jacket days came. Snowman and sliding days, indoor play days, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Valentine's Day. When all these days had passed and the March winds melted the snow, Tim found Jack again. There wasn't much left to him, just a faded and crumpled pumpkin skin, a stem, and a few seeds. Jack's Halloween magic was a distant memory now. Tim scraped a thin blanket of earth over the last bits of his pumpkin. When spring turned barefoot warm, a tiny sprout appeared where Jack had been. Tim found it, and guessed what it was. A pumpkin? Pumpkin. See. In the days that followed, Tim weeded and watered and watched that little sprout. Slowly and steadily, the plant changed and grew. It branched and spread a web of vines over the ground. But no pumpkins appeared. The days turned hot. Flowers opened on the plant each morning. Yellow stars that twisted shut forever in the afternoon. Still, there was no pumpkins. Finally, Tim found a little green ball growing behind a crumpled blossom. That's it. First the flower, and then a little green ball. It was a pumpkin. Tim let out a whoop and ran to show his mom. By August, the plant had spilled out onto the lawn. Tim's favorite game began, became pumpkin hunting. He carefully walked among the leaves, searching for green pumpkins like hidden treasures. That one. That one, yeah. He, he, he forgot. He's looking for them. School began again, and the days got cooler. 
Tim had less time now to visit the garden. When he did, the pumpkin plant seemed tired. There were not many new leaves, and the old, tattered ones no longer hid the fat green pumpkin seed. Then, one October morning, Tim woke up to see frost coating the garden. The frozen plants seemed with this they had been changed to pale blue glass. After school, Tim discovered what the frost had done. The pumpkin plant's leaves were as limp as wet paper. The plant was clean. Tim searched among the withered leaves for the unripe pumpkins. He picked them and put them on the front porch, hoping for one more change. By Halloween, the pumpkins had ripened to bright orange. There were many of them because the plant had been generous. Tim was generous too. He gave away all but one pumpkin. From jack-o'-lantern to sea to pumpkin again, the circle was almost complete. Now it was time for Tim to do his part. He gave his pumpkin a face. It smiled at him in a fierce and funny way. Tim smiled too and said, Welcome back, Jack.